They sure did a number on us. It sure looks that way. How long has it been? Too long. I'm talking about since we last seen each other. Washington, D.C., March 26, 1964. 1964. Looks like your American dream, Reverend Dr. Chicken Wing, has turned into a nightmare. Where did we go wrong? We? Oh, so we're a team now, Martin and Malcolm. We were always a team, Malcolm. We just played the game differently, that's all. Yes, we did. The only difference is I was playing to win. And I wasn't? Martin, you always played by the rules, and every time you scored a point for the team, they changed the rules. You're right. And that doesn't mean we stop Playing the game, Malcolm. We jump back in, adjust, re-strategize. We have been adjusting and re-strategizing for over 400 years, and for what? No matter how dark it may seem, Malcolm, our legacy still has to live on. Legacy? <laughs> what legacy? Rev, look around. You want to see your legacy? Well, now it's about how many followers you have on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> oh, not social media, Malcolm. I just open up a MySpace account myself. <laughs> it was a joke, Malcolm. You really need to lighten up. Says the man with the Nobel Peace Prize. Is that what this is all about? Oh, absolutely not. Despite what you might think, winning that award was an honor, and I'm thankful. How can you be thankful for an award for something that's already yours? Don't tell me you have a problem with me receiving an award for peace. Absolutely not. However, I will admit that I did find it just a little hard to digest watching you receive an award for peace when we're still at war. We had to start somewhere. Well, then we should have started with freedom. You can't separate peace from freedom. Why not? Because no one can be at peace without his freedom. Malcolm. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience. Where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. controversy. Yeah, that all sounds good. But if we don't stand for something, we just may fall for anything. Malcolm, let no man pull you low enough to hate him. <sighs> this is not about hate. This is about respect. Respect me or put me to death. Death? I thought this was about freedom. The price of freedom is death. Malcolm. Darkness, and not drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only, Only love, love can, can do, do that. that, Rev. I'm all about love in the dark and in the light, but I'm passionate about my freedom and the freedom of our people. Doesn't mean that I advocate violence, but I'm not against violence and so. That's still violence, Malcolm. I don't call it violence and self-defense. I call it intelligence. <laughs> intelligence. Malcolm, you're entitled to your own opinion. However, I've decided to stick with love. Hate. 
hate is too great a burden to bear. I don't hate anybody that doesn't hate me. So you're a racist now. I'm not a racist. Mm -hmm. I'm against every form of racism, segregation, and discrimination. I'm about human beings. And human beings, everyone should be treated and respected as such, regardless of their color. At the end of the day, Malcolm, it's about all human beings coming together as one. How can we come together as one and we don't even know who we are as individuals? Martin, if I have a cup of coffee that's too strong because it is too black, I weaken it by pouring cream. And if I pour enough cream in that coffee, eventually, you won't even remember that I had coffee in my cup. Maybe you should start drinking that fancy tea of yours. <laughs> it's called faith, Malcolm. Faith is taking the first step. Even when he can't see the whole staircase. If you need faith to see the stair steps in your own home, then you're in the wrong house. Is it my skin? My name is Clarence Jones III, and I've been cleaning this place for a very long time. Now believe you me, if these bars could speak the stories they would tell. That's because the last time this place was used down here was during the Civil Rights Movement. A lot of good people sat behind these bars for no reason. However, their stories will live on forever down here. That's because it's a museum now. So I guess that would make me like the historian of this fine facility. Now some folk that visit here leave with all kinds of stories. And all I know is, it's just more stories for me to tell to people like you. Get tired of coming to get me, man. It's crazy. Look, man, I'm just happy I'm free right now, man. I don't want to hear all that. Yeah. You want to hear that? Huh? That's what I'm talking about. What? Ooh, what? That's what I'm talking what about, I baby. <laughs> Look, I can see us putting a whole march to this, man. I'm talking about have the whole city come out. You talking like a civil rights activist? <laughs> <laughs> My bad, bro. Uh, Look, man. I just had the craziest dream. Just right upstairs was the police command post. 
We used to call it the complaint post. Sir, how much longer? An officer will be with you shortly. You said that an hour ago. Sir, please lower your voice and calm down. I'm not calming down. This is ridiculous. Sir, I told you an officer will be with you shortly. Now, things got a little heated at times up there. Like the time Lucky got arrested for no reason at all. No justice, no peace! Get off me! Shut up! No, no, same Get off me! Get off! It caused quite a bit of stir. Get off me! Get off me! Fuck up! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! He said he can't breathe! Now make no mistake about it, Lucky could have handled things a whole lot differently than what he did. And on the other hand, so could have the officers. Besides, isn't that what they're trained to do? Put him in his special cell! Lieutenant didn't have to hit him like that. Pick a side, rookie. Either you're blue or you're not. I took this job to protect and serve, not to abuse people. Yeah, I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I'm going home to my family, and I will go to anyone, including your black ass. <laughs> what happened to me being blue? When you take off that badge, you're just another nigga. See, just like Lucky, some officers of color had to go through the same abuse. Let's just say... They had to learn how to bite their tongue. You gonna help me or what? Put your mother on the phone. Hello, honey, honey. I'm okay. I'm fine. I, I, I'm okay. I had a little problem at work today. I had to shoot someone. Uh, um, no. Oh, no. It, it was some, it, some black guy in the car was his brother. I don't know. He's still in the hospital. I don't know what happened. One minute I'm walking to the car, the next moment all hell breaks loose. Sweetheart, sweetheart, calm down. Everything's going to be fine. Just fine. And you're in the wrong house. You all right? You all right, young man? Get off me! Take it easy, young blood. I was just trying to help. I don't need your help. I'm good. It's clear that you have everything under control. Mm. Is this your restroom? You trying to be funny, my nigga? Who y'all supposed to be anyway? 12 or something? Hold on, brother. We aren't the police. Look, man, you disrespect me one more time, nigga. Lucky, if you don't sit your dusty ass down, I'm gonna plead the blood and cripple you at the same time. Mm. You trying to clown me, my nigga? If you put your hands on me, you gonna draw back a nut. What did he just say? You misunderstood what he was trying to say. Tell the young brother what you were trying to say and be nice. I apologize. Mm. What I was saying is, I'm not Martin. If you put your hands on me, you better bring a catcher's mitt. Catch? Catches me for what? To catch these hands you gonna get. Man, no, hold on a second, hold on, brother, hold on. Really, Malcolm, we're supposed to be here to enlighten him. Oh, I light him up all right. Let him put his hands on me. Malcolm, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Yeah, but he didn't say anything about standing there and getting beat up. My colleague really does mean well. As I do also, we just have different ways of reaching that common ground. Name's Martin. The 
this here is Malcolm. <laughs> Hold on. Martin Malcolm. Oh, I get it. Hold on. Let me see. Tupac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tupac. It's nice to meet you, Tupac. It's Tupac, man. Tupac. It's rough. I know I'm down to a pack a day myself. <clears throat> mm. Man, I ain't talking about no cigarettes, my nigga. Are you serious? What's wrong with your man? Martin. Mm. He's talking about the rapper. You know, the poet. Man, come on. Everybody know who Tupac is. Grammy Award winner? Man, you wouldn't know nothing about that. I'll have you know I won a Grammy in 1971 for best spoken word album. Why I oppose the war in Vietnam? Grammy? That's right. And I was awarded a Congressional Gold Medal and a Medal of Freedom. But you wouldn't know anything about that. No, I wouldn't. But I do know who Martin is. I do know who Malcolm is. And I know they ain't y'all niggas. I know you ain't the feds. I know you ain't the police. So the million dollar question I gotta ask is, who is you niggas for real? We're the niggas that made it possible for little niggas like you to run around and play dress up like you're going to jail. Oops. My bad. You're already in jail. You could be whoever you want to be. Martin, Malcolm, Michael, Tito, Randy, or even Jenny. I really don't care. But I tell you this, my nigga. Neither one of you did anything for a nigga. I'm sure. But we did a whole lot for colored folk. And what that make me? You've already cleared that up. And pull up your pants. Don't nobody want to see your funky drawers. Your sticky ass. It's my swag. Yeah, well, your swag needs some soap and water. Mm. <laughs> okay. My nigga got jokes, huh? <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna be too many more of your niggas. Why do you use that word, nigga, so freely? They use it so freely because they didn't have to pay the price for it like we did. We ain't paying for nothing. You don't have to. We already did. I don't see what's the big deal anyway. It's just a word, my nigga. A word that we flipped and made positive. A word of endearment. Well, that's funny. I didn't feel love when you called me a nigga. Did you, Malcolm? I can't say that I did, Martin. See, that's because when I just said it, I meant it in a different way. So we playing guess a nigga. Look, let me break it down for y'all two like this. When I say my nigga or these niggas, that mean we cool, you feel me, my nigga? But on the other hand, when I say them niggas, these niggas, that nigga, those niggas, and I emphasize these, them, that, and those, that means I'm not cool, my nigga. Oh, I get it. So you don't like pronoun niggas. It's pronoun. This nigga crazy. <laughs> Man, you act like I just let anybody call me a nigga. You don't have to. You have been conditioned and trained to call yourself a nigga. Do you even know what the word actually means? What, pronouns? He's talking about the word nigga, nigga. <laughs> I know what that mean, man. It means black, man. Nigga, though, that's fine, yo. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> I bet you didn't know a nigga knew that, though, did you? Did a Negro know that the Spanish language comes from Latin? which has its origins in classical Greek. Derived from the root word necra, mm. which means dead. So I guess that means you a dead nigga. I'm alive and kicking. 
but you are spiritually and mentally dead. Brother, every time you speak that word, you're speaking death over us. No wonder our black man is almost extinct. Mm. Funny thing is, everyone knows the history of the word nigger and its origins except us, thanks to the Greeks. What the Greeks got to do with all of this? Everything. See, what Lucky didn't know was, it was the Greeks that traveled to Africa over 2,500 years ago to discover what the Africans already knew. Writing, science, math, religion, even medicine. It, it all came from us. Yeah, right. You're saying Socrates and Greek philosophers, they got all they, they teachings from Africans? <laughs> Socrates, you're not as dumb as you dress. Yes, they were all students. However, when the Greeks returned to Europe, they plan the destruction of the remaining African empires. Destruction? That's right. Europeans and Greeks destroyed cities, temples, libraries of the Egyptians and claimed African knowledge as their own. It was to enslave the Africans. It was culturally necessary to believe or to be able to believe that Africans were naturally and inherently less than human or as you so affectionately call yourselves now, niggers. Did you know that documented in the original text of the United States Constitution that Africans are three-fifths of a man by law? Here in America? Mm. Yes. When America was great, it was to devalue, dehumanize our historical worth as a people in order to ensure our values as slaves. You see, Lucky, you haven't flipped anything. All you're doing is giving it more power. You know how many people had to die for you not to be called a nigger. No, and I don't care. <laughs> I mean, come on, man, look. Y'all need to kill me with all this memory down memory lane stuff, man. That was then, this is now. In real talk, history ain't even got nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. Brother, did you hear a word he said? People died for you. Good people, you should care. You better care. Why should I? Tell me. I lost people too. They killed my brother, and they want to call it a justifiable shooting. Come on, man. That's the reason why we're in here. For now? But when I get out of here, we protesting. Protesting? Then we burn everything down! So you think that destroying and burning down your own neighborhoods and communities is protesting? Lucky, this is not gonna change anything. And it sure won't bring your brother back. You got any better ideas, OG? Huh, Rev? Oh, I get it. Oh, Martin here want everybody to just hold hands and sing, we shall overcome, huh? Come on, man. I've been saying that for years. I asked you a question, Lucky. You think all we did was hold hands and march? You tell me! I shouldn't have to! Why are you acting like you did me a favor? At the end of the day, all they see is my black skin. So what did you change, Rev? All the preaching and marching. They still out here killing us every day. Right now. Ain't nothing different. Make no mistake about it. 
We promoted change. We made a difference. The only thing that hasn't changed is you. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Lucky just couldn't understand Martin and Malcolm's frustration. Everything that they fought for, marched for, even died for, was thrown right back in their face. You know, half of the people that can vote don't. And that bothered them. That really, really bothered them. I tried. What do you want from me, man? I want all you got. Call it a morality sticker. Man, you don't get it. You're the one who doesn't get it. How are you going to change anything when your voice is silent? And what's voting going to do, huh? Last time we voted, they stole the election from us. You think that was the first time that we were cheated out of voting? We cannot stop voting. When we vote, we let our elected officials and lawmakers know how we feel about social security, public safety, education, health care. And other important issues, like your brother being gunned down. Mm. Yeah, that's real easy for you to say. Real talk, things are different now. Times have changed. There's no game out here in these streets. This ain't the 60s. You can't just throw on a shirt and a tie and go out here and think your problem's gonna disappear, man. You gotta put in the work if you wanna survive. Unlike you two, everybody ain't got a mommy or daddy to hold their hands. What did you say? I said, unlike you two, you and your homeboy right here, everybody ain't got a mommy and daddy to hold their hands. Sit your simple Simon ass down. Now! You don't know anything about Martin or me, except what they spoon feed you once a year for 29 days. Did you know that my father, Earl Little, was a Baptist minister? Martin's father was a Baptist minister. So was my father. The only difference is my father was killed when I was only six years old. He was murdered by a group of white men that didn't like the work he did for the Universal Negro Improvement Association. So no, my daddy wasn't there to hold my hand. My mother in 1938 suffered a mental breakdown, forcing me and my siblings to live in separate foster homes. So guess what? She wasn't there to hold my hand either. Look, I didn't know. You're right. You don't know. Did you know that I dropped out of school after a white teacher told me that I wouldn't be successful as a lawyer because I was black? So I started working and traveling and eventually settling in Harlem, New York. It was there that I became involved in drug dealing, prostitution, robbery, putting in work as you all say. You got down like that? You must have been a man, I man. Was. I was the man they sent to prison in 1946. While in prison, I began studying the Nation of Islam's teachings. I read somewhere you quit. Look at your God, Martin. Won't he do it? The boy reads. I mean, what, that wasn't true? Or something like that. I converted to uh, Sunni Islam after my pilgrimage to Mecca. So where'd the X come from? When I was 25, I began signing my name as Malcolm X. The X symbolizes the African family name that I would never know. Little, my birth name, was passed down from my slave owner who wiped out my family's original name, so I wiped out his. Yo, my bad, I didn't know, G. Well, now you do. There's a lot of people don't know about our history. History that can't be told in just 29 days. 
All due respect, OG, it's 28 days. You keep saying 29 days. Excuse me? I said, you keep saying 29 days, but we get 28 days in black history. Even I know that. They added a bonus day for Martin's birthday. You true, you right. Did you know that Martin is the only American to have his own day? He isn't the only one. So it's George Washington and Christopher Columbus. George Washington, Christopher Columbus. Yes. This nigga. True. However, wait for it. I'm the only native born United States citizen to have a national holiday in his honor. And he drops the mic and leaves the room. Now, is that black history or American history? You got a point. I don't need a point, Lucky. What I need is retribution. Mm. So, Lucky, is Lucky your real name? No, it's Sylvester. Sylvester McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> So, you're an Irish digger. What did you say? <laughs> the wrong nigga came out, but I meant it lovingly, my nigga. Sylvester, huh? Yeah, Sylvester McDonald Jr., man. Junior? So there's Two of you with that name running around. <laughs> ha ha. So is Martin and Malcolm really y'all names? Man, be straight with me. Guilty as charged. Same here, but it wasn't always. I was born Malcolm Little. And I was born Michael King Jr. Michael? Yes. My father changed his and my name to Martin Luther when I was five years old. He was inspired by a Protestant Reformation leader, Martin Luther, after a trip to Germany. So did you get kicked out of school like your boy Malcolm over here? I didn't get kicked out. You quit. I left. Kicked yourself. I dropped out. That's the same thing. This nigga. Yo, you hear what he just called me? I'm sure he meant it lovingly. Not at all, my nigga. <laughs> to answer your question, Lucky, no. I did not get kicked out of school. I actually skipped grades nine and 12. You skipped two grades in school? All I ever skipped was classes. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Not only did I skip two grades, but I attended Morehouse College at the age of 15. And I was ordained before graduating with a degree in sociology. Although I'm the son, grandson, and great-grandson of Baptist ministers, I did not intend to follow in my family's vocation until Benjamin E. Mays, a noted theologian, convinced me otherwise. So what kind of doctor were you? A heart surgeon? Lord forgive him, for he knows not what he do. Don't tell me you're calling on Jesus now, Malcolm. Martin, this boy need all the help he can get. Jesus, Allah, Buddha, even Bigfoot if we can find him. Lucky, I'm not that kind of doctor. My doctorate is in systematic theology. And after earning my divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozes Theological Seminary, I attended graduate school at Boston University where I received my PhD in 1955. <laughs> the title of my dissertation is A Comparison in the Conceptions of God and the Thinking of Paul Tillich and Henry Nelson Wattman. <laughs> With all them degrees, there's no way in the world you can relate to somebody like me from the hood. Why not? Come on, Rev. I mean, doctor. There's no way you could possibly understand what it feel like to be locked up. On the contrary, I do. I've been arrested 29 times, if not more. 
on acts of civil disobedience and trumped up charges. Like the one in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956. You remember that? <laughs> You were arrested for doing 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. Now that was gangster. I had a little bit of rebellion running around in me. <laughs> More like power walking. So you went to jail? Can't put nothing past you. Lucky. I did what I had to for the cause of the movement. I did what I had to for my family. I can't even picture you getting down like that, OG. But I did. Let's just say that Martin wasn't as committed to the practice of passive resistance as people think he was. He's right. In the mid 1950s, when my home and several Montgomery churches were bombed, I was more of a concerned family man than pacifist. It wasn't until later I decided I could no longer advocate nonviolent resistance. I was on the armed self defense. Huh? He's trying to say that the state of Alabama refused his application for a gun permit. Thank you, Malcolm, for clearing that up. You're more than welcome, Mr. Nobel Peace Prize. It sounds like you both were afraid for your life. Something like that. You know, not a lot of folk know that I was nearly assassinated while on the book tour. Signing copies of my book, Stride Toward Freedom. It was September 20th, 1958. And I was approached by Zola Ware Curry, who asked me if I was Martin, to which I replied affirmatively. When I said I was, she said, I've been looking for you for five years. She then pulled out a letter opener and stabbed me in the chest. <laughs> she put it work like that? It took three full hours to remove the blade. I never realized how much I went through for niggas like, I mean, people like us. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could have handled that. I ain't strong enough. Lucky, I wasn't always that strong. I remember disobeying my parents one day by going to watch a parade. And when I got home, I learned that my grandmother had passed away of a heart attack. So I went upstairs and jumped from the second story window of my house. You tried to commit suicide? Something like that. I know. I know you didn't. You probably, like a lot of people, didn't know that my mother was assassinated. Your mother? She was gunned down while playing the organ on Sunday. I've seen my fair share of funerals in my lifetime. <laughs> Quiet is kept. 
I spend my honeymoon with a funeral partner. <laughs> you had to preach at someone's funeral? <laughs> Not at all. A friend owned a funeral parlor and offered to let me use it for my honeymoon. <laughs> so what's the funny part? That was it. I spent my honeymoon at a funeral parlor. <laughs> Martin? <laughs> yes. Don't tell anyone else that. Now I see why we only met one time. So why'd you have your honeymoon in a funeral parlor? Well, at that time, hotels refused to rent rooms to blacks. However, we did get to spend our second honeymoon in Mexico five years later. <laughs> I guess this right here would be another chapter in black history, huh? Like slavery, right? I really wish folk would stop saying that. Slavery is not a part of black history. Slavery interrupted black history. Here we go. Malcolm. I thought we got past all this. Past what? They need to pass us out 40 acres and a mule. And what are you going to do with a mule? I don't know. But I've waited so long, at least I want to see what it look like. I sure could use 40 acres. We'd be lucky if we get $40. Funny thing is, Everyone else got retribution, and all we got was blacks. We remember what y'all did, Mark. So you don't think black history matters? I didn't say that. Of course it matters. But it's not just black history. It's all of our history. OK, Malcolm, that's what you want to call it. <laughs> that's what it is. You like to dream. Picture this. If everything we contributed to history was only allowed to be used for one month, we'd have the longest month of the year. Hell, they'd probably call it blacks. Y'all know we was just kidding. <laughs> I have to admit, that would be funny. Maybe we should organize a march. Yeah, that's the point. Well, it sure beats burning down your own neighborhoods and communities. You know, Lucky. You never told us what happened with your brother. It happened so fast. One minute we were sitting there, the next minute he was in my arms. So we doing this or not, man? Would you black male possible drug deal? Please receive a caution. I think so. What you mean you think so, man? Come on, CJ, this ain't no game, bro. You think I don't know that? Look, man, either you in or you out. You got to decide. Man, let me see. Did you get the one I told you to get? Yeah, I got it. Let me see. Tell me. I think so. I got no time for that, bro. Really hurt somebody feelings with that one. <laughs> why you? Why you holding it like you scared? I'm not scared, man. Well, let me see. Ooh, I'll show you how to hold that thing right there. Gun! CJ!
Now, some may say this was all a dream, while others may say it was real. Why don't I let you decide? As for the officer, he got just what he deserved. He was charged for using deadly force. Now that don't mean all officers are bad, because they're not. And we shouldn't let the clouded judgment of a few affect how we treat the other officers that put their lives on the line every day for us. Hey, let me see. Did you get the one I told you to get? Yeah, I got it. Show you how to hold that. Ooh, this is hmm? what I'm talking about, yeah, baby. Man. Look, man, um, love you. I want you to be my best man. You want me to be your best man? What else would you be? There you have it. They were doing nothing wrong that day. Nothing at all. End of story. See, when I say my or this my that mean we cool, you feel me, my Now, on the other hand, when I say this, these, or them, that means we ain't cool, you feel me? Now, Martin and Malcolm are trying to teach this boy the right way, how to stay on the right path, and he ain't listening. See, what he need is whip. That, that, that's just plain as I'm just gonna keep it real, okay? That's what he need. He need his whip. A good old fashioned whip. I see. So you don't like pronouns. What's pronouns? And he need to shave off that crazy looking hair. Got to stick it up looking like an octopus coming out of the back of his head. That don't make no sense. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lift every voice.